Welcome back to Triple E Tutorial Channel. Here in this video, uh, we will see the construction and uh, working of synchronous motors. Okay. We know that major requirements for the construction of <coughs> a synchronous motor is nothing but stator and a rotor. Already we have discussed the construction of alternator in detail in the previous video. There, you can see that uh, the construction of alternator and synchronous motors, both are same. But in the case of a synchronous motor, there we need or we are providing some external DC source for the excitation of the uh, rotor. That is the <coughs> major uh, additional requirements for the stator mo uh, synchronous motor instead of alternator so we will discuss about the construction uh, in detail okay so stator and rotor both are the major essential requirements for the construction of a synchronous motor here in this diagram <coughs> you can see a stator of the synchronous motor here we are providing or we are giving a three phase supply input to the stator parts. So, stator part means that includes some components. The first thing that is yoke. Yoke is uh, nothing but the external or the outermost body of the motor. They will provide mechanical support to the overall machine or they will provide mechanical supports to the entire machine and they carry the flux produced by the stator okay and the next important part that includes uh, the stator that is stator core the function of the stator core is to provide stator slots for the three phase armature winding so we are providing or we are giving uh, three phase armature winding in the slots of the stator core okay that is the function of the stator core and uh, next important thing that is nothing but we are laminating the stator core why generally we have already discussed we are providing laminations to reduce the eddy current losses if we are providing lamination by some silicon uh, sheets then it will reduce the hysteresis losses so these are the iron losses we have already seen about the losses in machines so laminations are provided to reduce eddy current silicon contents will reduce the <coughs> hysteresis losses okay so these are the major things uh, associated with the stator okay next important part that is a rotor as the name indicates a rotor is nothing but the rotating parts of the machine okay generally based on the construction of the rotor we can say a synchronous motor can be of two types salient pole type machine and a non salient pole type machine here in this uh, slide, we will see salient pole rotors. Salient pole rotors means the pole tips are projecting outwards. Okay, projecting outwards. Poles are uh, projecting outwards. <clears throat> and we are providing field rotor field windings to the arms of the salient poles. Okay, we are providing a rotor field windings to the amps okay normally they are used for low and medium speed machines because of the projecting poles okay and it has a large diameter and small axial length already in the previous video we have discussed the difference between the salient pole and non salient pole type machines for more details you can uh, refer the uh, video okay in this slide you can see a non salient pole type rotor 
the picture is very clear for you here the poles are not projecting they are <coughs> not projecting hence they got the name non salient pole type machine or otherwise we can say smooth salient type machines and normally these type of machine uh, rotors are used for high speed operations and they have smaller diameter and longer axial length okay but in the case of a synchronous motor generally uh, we are using projecting type poles that means salient pole type rotors are generally employed for the construction of a synchronous motor okay so here we are going to see the working of a synchronous motor okay here you can see a salient pole and a non salient pole type rotors you know the non salient pole type motors are also known as cylindrical pole type or smooth cylindrical type poles okay so let us think about the <coughs> working of a three phase uh, working of a synchronous motors okay normally we are giving a three phase supply to the stator so what will happen to them if we are giving a three phase supply to the stator it will provide a rotating magnetic field it will generate or create a, a rotating magnetic field will create in the uh, created by the stator so we are giving a three phase supply to the stator magnetic field it will provide a rotating magnetic field the speed of the rotating magnetic field is known as synchronous speed synchronous speed generally already we have discussed the term synchronous speed ns is equal to 120 f by p ns n means speed s means synchronous so ns is the synchronous speed so synchronous speed is nothing but the speed of the rotating magnetic field which is produced by the stator if we are giving a three phase supply that is the synchronous speed it is the uh, rotating magnet it is the speed of the rotating magnetic field which is produced by the stator stator when we are giving a three phase supply to the stator and the rotor is placed inside the machine here you can see a salient pole type machine okay here we are providing a dc excitations to the rotor magnetic field rotor field this is the rotor field <clears throat> okay so if we are providing a dc excitation to the rotor magnetic field then it will provide a steady magnetic field okay if we are giving a dc supply it will provide a steady magnetic field because of providing three phase ac supply it will provide a rotating magnetic field so then what will happens generally the number of stator number of poles will be equal to a rotor number of poles so uh, let us consider that uh, if it is north pole here we can we can see a rotating magnetic field alternate north and south poles will be there at a particular instant the north pole of the rotor magnetic field will interact with the north pole of the stator magnetic field so what will happen then same we know that the same poles will repel each other and the opposite poles will attract with each other so the rotor will move to this direction so at the next instant what will happens uh, this north pole will come in contact with the south pole then the motor will try to rotate this direction so we can say the rotor movements will be fluctuating left to right and right to left left to right and always it is fluctuating so the motor will not move it will be at in a steady position so we can say 
this condition is known as inertia so due to the inertial moments or due to the inertial phenomenon the rotor will not move so it is necessary to rotate the motor <clears throat> so we are providing an external prime mover prime mover is provided here for the moments of the rotor so we can say due to this inertial property the synchronous motors are not self starting to make it starting to make it self starting or to start the motor we are providing a prime mover or we are providing an external support for this we are providing some prime movers or we are rotating the motor <clears throat> instead of this prime mover we can use many other methods to start the motor okay so due to this uh, prime mover due to this external supports the rotor will uh, rotate at a particular instant of time the north pole of the uh, rotor <coughs> magnetic field gets locked with the south pole of the stator or the south pole of the synchronous uh, rotor magnetic field get locked with the south pole of the stator magnetic field it means opposite poles will get uh, come in contact with each other and they'll get locked so magnetic locking will occur magnetic locking <clears throat> when the when both poles get locked then the motor will rotate at the same speed of the stator magnetic field that is synchronous speed this is the working of synchronous motor <clears throat> i will explain once again if we are giving a three phase supply to the stator stator it will provide a rotating magnetic field that is rmf the speed of the rotating magnetic field is nothing but the synchronous speed and the rotor is placed inside this motor and we are giving a dc excitation to the rotor magnetic field due to this dc excitation it will provide a steady magnetic field so when the north pole or any south poles of the uh, if we are considering the north pole if the north pole of the rotor magnetic field come in contact with the stator magnetic field it will get repels each other so the motor will starts to rotate in any particular direction and then uh, next instant the south pole will get attracted with the north pole then the motor will starts to rotate in the opposite direction always it is uh, changing due to this pole changing properties we can say the rotor cannot move it will be in the steady position that is the inertial position so we can say the synchronous motors are not self starting so to make the motor self starting we are providing some external supports so if we are providing a prime mover to the rotor and make the motor rotating when the motor attains a particular speed at a particular instant the opposite poles of both the magnetic field get locked then the mot uh, rotor will starts to rotate at the speed of the synchronous speed and this is the working principle of a synchronous motor so both conditions are necessary that simply we can say the interaction of stator and rotor magnetic field is the working principle of a synchronous motor or otherwise the magnetic locking of synchronous stator magnetic field and rotor magnetic field will creates a rotating movements that is the working of a synchronous motor so here i have so here i have explained the working you can use it uh, to collect the notes we can refer this topic to collect the notes okay so here in this slide you can see some features associated with the synchronous motors 
uh, based on the facts that are already we have discussed. First point is it is not self-starting. Already we have seen the reason behind it. And it is a double excited machine. You know that uh, stator needs AC excitation. A rotor side needs a DC excitation. So both these excitations are necessary for the proper working of a synchronous motor. And the speed can be varied only based uh, only on the basis of changing the frequency. Because NS, synchronous speed is 120 F by P. Poles are fixed. The only one method to change the synchronous speed is uh, by changing the frequency. Okay, it is independent, <coughs> speed is independent of load. If we, if we increase the load, the torque will also increases. Okay, it will run at the synchronous speed. And the, uh, another important point is that <coughs> synchronous motors can run as lagging and as well as leading power factors so that it can be used for the improvement of power factor. We know that generally in the form of synchronous condensers, we can say overexcited. Overexcited synchronous motors are known as synchronous condensers. These synchronous condensers can be used to improve the power factors in industries and in transmission sections. Okay. So these are the main features for the synchronous motor. These points are very important for your technical exam point of view. Uh, okay. So these are the major things that we have discussed. The construction and the working of synchronous motors and the major features associated with the synchronous motors. Okay. Thank you.